Thank you, Jason. Hello, everyone. Good morning, good evening, wherever you are. I'm happy that you're joining our webinar today around IoT security. Um, the last piece of the XDR puzzle, augmenting IoT security operations with IoT security. Um, so my name is Nimrod Aldag. I'm a product lead in Defender for IoT, responsible for the enterprise IoT. Uh, I've been in Microsoft for two and a half years now. Um, and I have over a decade of work around cybersecurity and product management. Uh, and I'm very excited to have uh, to be able to do this webinar with you today. Um, a quick overview of Defender for IoT. Um, this actually starts outside of the realm of uh, Microsoft, where CyberX was founded in 2013. Um, CyberX was a leading uh, company in the field of IoT and OT security. Um, and in 2020, Microsoft acquired CyberX and attached it to the um, ASC for IoT, which is the older name for the Center for IoT, hence becoming this big new group that covers all domains of security around IoT and OT. Since we've made some other acquisitions that have high relevance for, uh, for this realm, um, and very recently in July, we went full GA with our uh, security stack for OT and IoT with M365 Defender, which is a main focus of our webinar today. Um, a quick overview of our agenda for the webinar. We will quickly start with aligning around Microsoft XDR and the principles and value that we provide through it. Um, we will briefly go through IoT security challenges um, and then introduce how our enterprise IoT solution helps resolve these uh, security challenges. And then we will do a deep dive on how we're taking this um, new level of value for IoT devices and incorporating it into the Microsoft XDR in order for our customers to be able to um, leverage it um, across their security stack and to be able to augment their IT security operations. Um, so a very quick overview of um, the XDR offering. Um, so the main platform for XDR in Microsoft is the Microsoft 365 Defender. It is a suite of several advanced solutions um, that help our customers to take control over security in their IT um, environment and cross environment. Um, with uh, Microsoft Defender for Cloud and with Sentinel, we provide a complete suite of solutions that help customers protect each and every asset across the organization through identities, endpoints, apps, um, and um, other parts of, uh, of the business. Um, this is not a new offering, um, and we have many customers enjoying this offering today. Um, but um, there was something a little bit uh, missing in it, and that is um, more emphasis and more visibility to IoT, um, and that would be the focus of our conversation today. Um, with respect to what is the actual principle and value that the XDR provides our customers with, so the first is context and correlation by connecting different products, different uh, detections, telemetries, and data points. We are able to provide a greater story to uncover new unknown threats that customers can uh, should be proactive about and uh, respond to, and to help our customers reduce the mean time to detect and the mean time to respond, making security operations more effective, more quick, with the existing resources that our customers currently have. The second principle of the XDR is the store security orchestration, automation, and response. Naturally, providing um, rec security recommendations and alerts is great and very much necessary on top of that to provide a good investigation experience, but to really allow customers to scale and for security teams to take the next step um, as threats are changing, um, we need to be able to help our customers to automate their uh, response and to adopt a shift left mindset where everything that is simple and known and straightforward can be automated. Let's use the human expertise 
where it uh, really needed. And the last principle is the single UI. This is a huge benefit of the XDR and something that we're getting a lot of great feedback for in M365 Defender, um, that our customers are able to perform multiple operations across different entities, devices, and assets in the organization within um, the same UI. That's something that uh, security practitioners very much love. We all are very uh, keen on using the uh, existing UIs that we love and uh, that we're used to. Um, and that kind of uh, concludes uh, the value that XDR brings to, uh, to security teams. So let's very quickly dive into uh, the challenges that IoT devices bring into the organization. So we're really seeing um, a huge increase in the adoption of IoT devices throughout the enterprise, um, whether it's in the corporate environment or office where um, new and more improved uh, devices help drive new business innovation um, and business operations, starting from uh, smart TVs through um, human machine interaction devices that help customers or help employees uh, to get a better experience and the well familiar IoT devices like uh, printers, cameras, uh, VoIP phones, etc. Um, these devices are being adopted more and more um, and basically are part of uh, the IT uh, network. With them we're seeing uh, other types or other locations where IoT devices are being um, adopted very much in the building management system that is becoming smarter to help organizations have more control over their work environment, whether it's um, HVAC with smart sensors, smart lighting, smart shading, et cetera, et cetera. Um, users today want to have that level of uh, control over the IoT devices, and with that naturally comes um, the risk. Um, the same applies for the supply chain and naturally for production facilities. This is um, the bread and butter for uh, Defender for IoT. Um, but in this conversation, we would naturally uh, focus on um, this part. So really having so much devices in so many locations introduced by different people in the organization, in some cases even uh, bring your own device where users bring their uh, tablets or Raspberry Pis or Arduino devices and just connect them into uh, the network increases um, significantly the attack surface um, that security teams are now required to protect. Um, they are not familiar with, their device, with that, those devices. They don't have visibility and understanding of those devices. So that in itself is a huge obstacle when trying to um, overcome and to provide security for the entire perimeter and um, corporate network. Um, additionally, different devices bring different vulnerabilities, backdoors, misconfigurations, and IoT specific uh, uh, threats or, um, or risks. And security teams are in the process of learning that while still um, being in charge of the overall IT security with cloud security, um, et cetera, et cetera. So um, these are kind of the main challenges that we've identified with um, our customers, the ability to focus on so many new devices and the quantity um, um, of these devices that just keeps increased um, by every day, the ability to identify them and contextualize them, the ability to be proactive about these devices. They are already there how can we address them to reduce the attack surface? And how can we be knowledgeable and minded for threats introduced by, um, by these devices so we can keep a business continuity and ensure that um, we are protected as much as possible against all type of threats? And really, this is not just a guessing game. We're seeing how um, attackers are really leveraging IoT devices throughout the attack kill chain, starting as um, initial access by um, a camera connected to um, the internet through lateral movement, 
privilege escalation and credential harvesting through um, exfiltration um, and data sets. So these are not just some random or esoteric uh, part of your network. This is a golden goal. This is a lucrative target for attackers today. So the way that we um, address it is with um, our enterprise IoT uh, solution. This solution is comprised of uh, several parts. Um, where the GA part that we provide um, is currently based largely on the M365 platform. Um, so um, just to provide a quick overview of what we provide and what sort of type of customers are eligible for uh, different levels of, um, of this product. So uh, P2 customers today, formerly E5 customers, um, are getting out of the box initial discovery in their M365 Defender console. That uh, uh, discovery is based on the MD agents that are already deployed in your environment um, that are being leveraged as main sensors. We'll have a deep dive into that uh, in a few minutes. Um, so customers can already start understanding and assessing um, their uh, IoT devices, even without doing anything, but going into the uh, device inventory in M365 Defender and start um, understanding their environment and devices. Also, additionally, um, there are some um, network focused uh, alerts that also cover um, IoT devices such as uh, brute force or password spraying. Um, so this is something that M365 Defender also uh, are eligible for today. And there's also um, a new previewed uh, feature for response that we will show um, in a minute. So that is only for preview customers at the moment. Customers that will purchase, P2 customers that will purchase the enterprise IoT uh, product will also get on top of uh, the free discovery and the several alerts, additional um, alerts as well as specifically crafted IoT focused alerts. Um, they will get security recommendations and vulnerabilities for IoT and network devices and will be able to perform hunting and create custom rules for um, these devices. Um, and this is based, again, solely on the M365 Defender uh, platform. As part of our offering, we also uh, enable our customers to use a network sensor that was developed in Defender for IoT. That sensor is still in preview, but available for all customers. And the sensor helps uh, our customers to complete the discovery. We'll see it in a minute. And also uh, get additional very um, focused IoT security value, um, mostly around security recommendations, vulnerabilities, and uh, alerts um, that helps augment and get additional context for these devices. Um, so with our solution, customers um, can help address the IoT challenges that uh, we've introduced on different levels, and we will also show that as part of uh, the presentation today. Um, and just to uh, show how easy the um, onboarding is for this um, SKU, so um, this is the uh, settings page in uh, M365 Defender. There's um, a specific uh, category for device discovery where our users can also uh, do the setup and uh, perform exclusions for the existing discovery. Um, you can see here the Enterprise IoT um, tab. And in order to onboard, you just need to be a global admin in um, M365 Defender to provide an Azure subscription because this is a Defender for IoT product. Defender for IoT is part of Azure. Um, we are consumption based and um, our billing is based on Azure subscriptions. Provide that as a subscription admin. Um, choose your price plan. I will uh, say right away that our customers can test um, and trial this uh, capability for one month for free. Um, so you can just choose trial. 
Um, and if you choose to continue and become um, a customer of our product, um, you will choose the monthly commitment. You will provide the number of devices, which is simply uh, the sum of the discovered IoT devices and discovered network devices, and you're basically done. So that's kind of how we go about solving this solution. We will now do a deep dive on how that actually looks like. Um, so now I'm going to um, provide a little bit more technical information about how our solution works and how uh, our users and customers actually consume the value um, that we provide on top of M365 Defender. So just to give a quick overview of our um, architecture. So if this is your corporate IT environment, um, we leverage two collectors that I've mentioned earlier <clears throat> um, in order to get access to um, relevant pieces of information that will allow us to perform the discovery and security value. So the first one is the known one and the main one is the Defender for Endpoint agent. Again, this agent is already deployed um, in large parts of your organization. Um, we've added two agents running on Windows 10, Windows 11, and Server 2019 a new model that is capable of performing a discovery for devices in general, but naturally also for network and IoT de uh, devices. Um, and that discovery works on two levels. The first one is called basic discovery, where um, we leverage the existing network uh, data that uh, the agent is able to collect in order to try and um, identify and classify devices in the vicinity of the agent and we are also using a, a, an additional level of discovery called standard discovery that takes a more active approach where devices that we have little information about we do a very crafted means of investigation or querying um, on that device in order to try and extract additional details that will help us to not only classify it but also understand its security status so we can um, provide some actionable recommendations um, for the device. Naturally, users today um, can and are consuming the data in the M365 Defender platform. The second collector that we offer is the Defender for IoT Network Sensor. Um, this is a network appliance that is being installed on your network, usually on a core switch or a gateway switch. Um, it feeds on traffic based on a spend ports configuration, uh, some sort of mirroring, um, and it is very um, um, straightforward in how it's working. It collects the uh, traffic data, extracts relevant pieces of information, and only those it is sending to our service in Azure, where we employ additional means of um, classification and security value. And we are basically um, uh, created a native integration between Defender for IoT and M365 Defender, where we share um, information about devices and security data. So you uh, get basically a mirror view of your inventory um, in both services. So our customers can decide what portal um, they prefer to use. Um, so also, uh, just to, to stretch out that devices that are also being discovered by uh, the network sensor are being sent and presented in the M365 Defender and also get security value in that platform. The idea um, of um, making these two uh, collectors work together um, came to life by the problems of coverage that we got from our customers. So if we will take this as an extremely simplified um, structure of an IT network, so we have um, an open space, we have some conference room, um, and we have the facility network that is comprised only of IoT devices. This is something that is naturally suggested for organization pursuing um, zero trust and micro segmentation in their a organization, but even if in your organization you 
um, uh, configured all of your printers or all of your boy phones in a given villain, then um, that can also uh, be something that we can address uh, differently. So on one hand, we have the uh, MDE agents, again, installed on the endpoint. They are able to identify the IoT devices in their vicinity, in their subnet, even the, uh, in some cases, the router that they are communicating with. In other cases, some of the devices outside of the router, if I'm sending a document uh, for printing in a different printer, I might still be able to um, identify that printer. Um, and that gives us the initial coverage for IoT devices. Now, multiple that by the number of agents you have in your organization, and you're getting a pretty good solid coverage of your network, hence your IoT devices and network devices. But as we can see in all of the organizations that we work with and um, are part of our design partnership or preview plan, um, there are always some segments, some VLANs, some networks, some areas where the, there are no MDE agents and um, it's not possible to install or to add one. And this is really where uh, the network sensor comes to life um, and helps uh, uh, provide coverage for uh, those areas. Naturally, um, based on the spend ports configuration, our customers can also span other VLANs or uh, parts of the network, and we would just identify, again, the same devices and will uh, attempt to, to deduplicate them and say, this is the same device identified by, um, uh, by different means. So really, together, the agent and the sensor are capable of covering the entire breadth of your network and provides two very main uh, benefits. The first one, zero time to value. You already have your inventory for IoT devices today. By onboarding our SKU, you would just start getting also a security value recommendations, alerts, vulnerabilities for this device, uh, discovered devices in M365 Defender. Three clicks and you're all set. Um, and the other benefit is the flexibility. Again, you already have a, a good understanding of your network. With it, you can un also understand what parts or what segments of the network are not covered ideally, and for them to use the uh, network sensor to get that um, additional level of coverage. Um, so, I'm uh, going to run through how uh, our product comes into life within the M365 Defender uh, platform and how they help augment uh, the IT security operations um, and basically the, the XDR solution. So here in front of us, we have the device inventory. Um, as you can see, it's now part of the assets category with identities. And we've broke down uh, the inventory into three main parts the computers and mobiles, these are the managed endpoints, but also discovered endpoints that currently don't run the MDE agent, um, but are eligible or can uh, run that. So that can help you with compliance, that can help you with coverage, making sure that all of your endpoints are running uh, the MDE agent. Um, additionally, we have network devices and IoT devices. Again, this is uh, the devices being discovered by um, the agent. And for uh, these devices, we provide rich, uh, sorry, rich details. Um, first and foremost, the classification. What is the device type and subtype for these devices? Is this a printer? Is this a VoIP? Is this a smart, smart refrigerator? Or um, is this um, a Wi-Fi hotspot? Um, that in itself, it um, really helps customers understand what their um, inventory looks like, what their attack surface looks like, and they only based on that can already start being proactive if they see, um, let's say, vendors that um, do not comply with um, um, security policies in the organization. For instance, vendors that come from a given country that is banned or not allowed to use in um, defense organizations, as an example, um, or 
generally devices such as, as mentioned earlier, Raspberry Pis or other miscellaneous devices that should just not be part of our network like an Xbox, which is really fun to use, but not an ideal part of um, an IT network. Um, this is the basis um, and for customers that will onboard the enterprise IoT uh, SKU, they will start getting also the uh, risk level and the exposure level for these devices. Just a quick reminder, risk level is uh, calculated based on the alerts and incidents um, that um, a given device or endpoint is involved in. Um, and the exposure level is calculated based mostly on the security recommendations and vulnerabilities associated with this device. So today, P2 customers will get this inventory without the risk level and the exposure level. Defender for IoT product, enterprise IoT customers um, um, will get the risk level and exposure. Um, so already today, by having this, um, um, this inventory, we can start augmenting our security recommendations. So this is a great example of a network-based um, detection we see that we have um, a managed endpoint um, that has been scanned by multiple remote devices. Now, um, there are a couple of devices here that all we know about is an IP address. So we know they are part of our network. We know that they are performing suspicious activity, and that's it. That's all we know about them. So this would uh, force us to um, leave this a portal and um, ask for IT help in identifying or understanding this uh, device. With the new discovery, we can easily understand that this device is um, actually a printer um, and to get the, the details about it. Um, so it, in itself, we are now in a much more acknowledged um, step or level regarding this incident and can um, follow through accordingly. How or why is this printer even performing um, scanning activity in my network? It sounds like it's um, um, compromised or uh, misused. I need to be able to uh, identify it. So if here before identifying, we just see that there's one device, our managed endpoint and some unidentified IP addresses, with uh, the discovery, we're able to see that this is indeed an IoT device and go and investigate it um, directly. And let's do just that. So um, also as part of the inventory, we provide the full uh, device page. Um, you can see here the um, risk and threat assessment that has been done for this device. Um, you can get here all of the information, such as the operating system, vendor model, everything that um, we've shared earlier uh, and more, but also dive in and get a better understanding of, of the device. So first to see all of the alerts associated in this, um, for this device. In this case, we have um, only one, but we have seen um, devices that um, have been part of multiple um, alerts or multi-stage incidents. Um, so you can uh, see here very quickly and clearly understand how compromised or how risky this device is. Um, you can also get um, the timeline for this device, mostly in the sense of how it has been communicating with managed endpoints. And this is a great feature because once you have a suspicious um, IoT device, the first thing that you would like to know is what other devices it's been communicating with. Um, so that in itself helps you to kind of try and estimate the blast radius or generally the devices or endpoints associated in a given incident or suspicion um, and help to really kind of focus your investigation. Um, and naturally, uh, you can also um, consume um, information about security recommendations and vulnerabilities to be proactive for the device, but to also understand or try and estimate how this device has been um, compromised to begin with. 
So we can really um, quickly get a lot of new information and understanding about these devices as part of a, a security investigation that up until now we had zero clue and zero information about. And to get even 50% of this information, we would have to go to several third party products or engage with multiple uh, people outside of the security team to just try and understand what this is all about. Um, so let's um, really try and dive to understand how this device has been compromised. Let's see what the security recommendation that we have associated for, um, for this device. So in this case, we see that um, Telnet um, is open on this device with no authentication. So basically, any local user in the network can uh, use Telnet in order to engage with this customer, uh, sorry, with this uh, device um, and perhaps uh, find code or make changes um, or take advantage of vulnerabilities or other misconfigurations on uh, the device. So first, this already helped me to better understand how misconfigurations in my uh, devices can be used um, to compromise them. Um, but now I can also be proactive and decide that I want to um, remediate this to first kind of um, um, decrease the, the risk associated here um, and make sure that this is not something that repeats itself um, by the same attacker or other attackers or just um, malicious users in my organization. Um, so I can um, request uh, to perform remediation on uh, this device. And what, and something I really love about this is the ability to provide this remediation, not only for this device, but for additional devices and endpoints in the same experience. And I think this is a huge benefit in the M365 Defender platform that um, it really allows you to take the existing security operations that you have in the same UI and to now also include IoT devices in this without additional training, without additional manpower, without an additional UI. You just do everything you've done so far and you get IoT security coverage as part of it out of the box. And I think that's really amazing and it's a really powerful um, feature um, that our customers can now um, use. Um, so really to be able to uh, create a single ticket for the IT team, for the security team, for the network team in Intune, for endpoints, entities, IoT devices um, is astonishing and helps reduce different tickets. Um, many people basically doing the same thing without even knowing that they're working on um, the same thing. So helps uh, in moving quicker with remediation um, and reducing attack um, surface and also to save time, money, frustration, and valuable people's time. Um, we kind of showed an example for a, a security recommendation. Naturally, the same applies for vulnerabilities. I gave um, another example here from a different IoT device uh, that one of our customers have that had a vulnerable OpenBSD version. So we see that there are um, high CVs associated with this device. We can see that there are other devices that have the same vulnerabilities um, associated with them. So again, same trick applies. Let's open a single ticket for all of these devices, IoT and endpoints, for the IT team asking um, to remediate them. Some of them will be patched remotely, some of them will be patched locally, and some of them um, will require uh, engaging with uh, the vendor to perform uh, uh, the patching, but now we have a ticket for it. We know we have a vulnerable device, we created a ticket for it, we can follow that and make sure that we're mitigating this risk. Um, so just to do a, a very quick um, um, recap of what we discussed. So we have an ongoing incident 
um, that involves both endpoints and IoT devices. We know that we have a compromised IoT device. Um, we know that um, it's susceptible for Telnet, um, and that might be some of the ways that uh, the attacker used in order to uh, compromise it. Um, and we want to start moving towards um, resolution of the incident. So providing security recommendations, security alerts, that's great, but we understand that, um, again, as part of the SOAR principle of uh, the XDR, we also need to provide response capabilities, um, and this is why we've introduced the contained device option. So this is a great way for security teams to halt ongoing incidents um, and help provide some time for uh, investigation, for containment, and making sure that a given IoT device doesn't uh, continue spreading um, throughout the network. And the way it's worked is, is really easy. If we have this compromised device, we would basically instruct all of the managed uh, endpoints in the organization to block communication with this device. So we at least know that for the assets that we manage with uh, Defender for Endpoint or M365 Defender, we're able to um, um, keep them from engaging with this malicious device until we patch it, until we remove it from the network, replace it, whatever it is. Um, even if the device is moving or changing its IP address because um, it got a new one from the DHCP, the way that this uh, containment work is continuous, so um, the blockage of, um, of the managed devices will continue even if the IP address uh, would change. Um, we can naturally track um, uh, this IoT device and help it um, um, again to come to resolution, either removal from the network or patching and um, getting back to home. So um, I think we, we are able to cover how inventory, security recommendations, alerts, and response help augment um, security operations for uh, IoT devices um, within the XDR platform. I just want to show um, another couple examples that I think why might be very interesting for our customers. The first one naturally is to create custom rules for uh, IoT devices. Um, this is a rule I helped one of our customers uh, create. Uh, they have a very um, organized network. They have a dedicated VLAN for every type of a uh, device. So for them to uh, create a rogue device, um, uh, discovery was really easy. We just kind of did a mapping up. If there's a printer or a TV or a VoIP outside of this or this or this VLAN, that means it's a rogue device. If we're seeing a Raspberry Pi or an Xbox or anything of that sort, that's a rogue device. And they were able to very quickly identify some users that have been bringing their own devices, connecting them to the network, and basically creating some uh, security risk. If you remember, this was the case in NASA that kind of started the um, um, the very famous breach. Um, so again, you can create your own custom detections based on the data that uh, we provide. Again, in the same manner that you do it today for endpoints, um, you can create your own queries um, or hunt for specific um, behaviors or uh, IDs in the network for IoT devices as well. Um, again, in the same UI, in the same experience. Um, so um, really very minimal onboarding needed here. Um, again, a reminder about the Defender for IoT private community where we share roadmap, um, asking customers to uh, participate in the preview of new um, features and also just generally release uh, news um, and update about the, the product. So I invite you all uh, to join. Um, thank you very much for everyone.
Great, thank you. Uh, we do have a few questions. Um, if uh, you'd like to answer them, um, the first one is how sophisticated is the discovery slash scanning feature? Would you position the product as a challenger to generic network based vulnerability scanners or even vulnerability management solutions? To what extent is the scanner configurable, such as level of aggressiveness, service scanning, validation of exploitability, etc.? Uh, OK, so that's not one question. That's about five questions, but I will attempt to answer them all. Um, so the um, vulnerability management portion um, is part of TVM, which is the threat and vulnerability management um, in uh, M365 Defender. Um, as part of the discovery, we actively and passively collect um, pieces of information about the device that are used to uh, to build the profile that um, is then used to extract TVs. So information about the uh, running application, operating system, and naturally the firmware, and that is being used continuously um, to query um, the CVE database and identify vulnerabilities in IoT and network devices. So. To that extent, I would say that it's a direct competitor of a vulnerability a assessment and network scanners that are applicable in um, the market today. In some cases, I would even argue that this is better because it is continuous and doesn't require a specific run or a specific um, execution in order to get that um, uh, discovery. Um, as part of presenting uh, information about uh, um, CVEs for endpoints and devices, there are also um, a portion addressing the exploitability um, of the CVE um, that is an existing part of the TVM offering and applies for um, IoT devices uh, as well. Um, so users can um, get very, I would say, detailed information about uh, the weaknesses, the vulnerabilities that the given endpoint or device have, um, and to be very um, accurate or very informed in choosing and prioritizing a response or mitigation. Great, thank you. Uh, the next one we have is, is there a containment reversal action in the event of false positive or wrongful action? Absolutely, it is possible to uncontain the, um, the device. Um, it's basically just pressing the same button. Again, once a device is contained, it shows as contained and the button, uh, button changed to uncontain the device. Um, it also appears in the documentation, so you can um, feel free to uh, read more about it. Great, thank you. Um, the next one is, Will the port scanning alert show only with active discovery? So the alert itself doesn't depend on the discovery. Um, the alert is based on the behavior that um, agents are um, or were able to uh, collect and for the M365 Defender platform uh, to identify. So as, um, as I've showed earlier, um, the, the scanning activity started by an endpoint that identified that several different devices are performing um, scanning against it without any knowledge of what these devices are. Um, by using the discovery, we were able to inform the security practitioner about what this device is to provide additional context um, and information that helps understand or give additional value when investigating the scanning alert. Great, thank you. Uh, the next one is, how can the scope of scanning be managed, such as preventing roaming users to scan non-corporate networks or limiting devices aggressively scanning in certain corporate network segments? Uh, I, I didn't hear all of it. Can you please repeat? Yeah. How can the scope of scanning be managed, such as mm -hmm. preventing roaming users to scan non-corporate networks or limiting devices aggressively scanning in certain corporate network segments? 
Perfect. That's a very great uh, question. So the first part of it is that as part of the existing discovery, we're using several uh, methods and algorithms to uh, determine if a given device resides in a corporate network. Um, because we are fully aware of uh, the privacy risk associated with um, discovering uh, devices in uh, homes or um, other businesses or other offices. So we're basically looking at several parameters in order to uh, determine if this device is, uh, this IoT device is part of uh, the corporate network. If we don't meet these terms, we would not send any information about this device. Um, this is the first part. The second part is that in uh, the device discovery tab in the settings page in M365 Defender, um, customers can uh, use several methods to control the, the, the standard discovery. Um, they can go on a more um, uh, include method by using uh, tags and device groups in order to determine what devices will be um, scanned and published. And they can also use an exclude uh, method where they provide specific IP addresses or IP ranges that will not be um, scanned, that will not be discovered. So that really allows um, great flexibility for customers to decide how they want discovery uh, to take part in their organization. Great, thank you. Uh, the next one we have is how is encrypted encrypted traffic handled on the sensor? So we do not, um, at least today, we do not open or unencrypt um, encrypted traffic. Um, we do get uh, the unencrypted handshake and based on that, we're trying to um, um, extract as much information and we see the lower level of uh, uh, communication. And again, based on that, try um, to get information about this device. Um, this, is, this is not currently a challenge for us when it comes to a uh, classification. Um, but I assume that as we stride forward and start to cover more ground, um, uh, we will need to address it. Um, there is no specific timeline for that at the moment. Great, thank you. Uh, the next question we have is the MDA agent, MDE agent referenced the same MDE agent we already use, or is it an additional agent that needs to be installed? It is the same agent that you have today already running on your endpoints. You need zero deployment, zero configuration, zero installation. You All you need to do first, if you're a P2 customer, if you want to see your IoT devices, all you have to do is go into the M365 Defender portal, go to the Devices tab, to the IoT section, and you will see um, your IoT devices. Um, um, naturally, the network sensor as a network appliance requires installation, but um, when it comes to the MDE agents, nothing is required, no change, this is um, an existing capability, so you're good to go. Great, and the uh, last question is, does the containment feature require that the devices instructed to block traffic from this IoT device be managed by a solution such as Intune? Um, to the best of my knowledge, no, I, I need to check, um, but uh, as far as I know, uh, this is leveraged by the personal firewall running on, on those devices. So the um, instruction to block communication doesn't uh, necessarily depend on Intune. Um, I'm, I'm not fully aware, but uh, I, I can look into it. Again, uh, it all appears in the documentation in the M365 Defender uh, portal. Um, the answers are there, but I'll look into it as well. Great. Uh, well, I'd like to thank you, Nimrod, for being our guest, guest today and for an excellent presentation. And thank you to the rest of the team who helped answer questions. 
At the same time, I would like to remind the listeners that the best way to ensure you don't miss any future webinars or major announcements is to visit our landing page at aka.ms slash security community. And while there, you'll find <coughs> easy ways to navigate and find the resources and learning content relevant to our security products and their communities. A good start would be browsing our bite-sized product videos, ninja trainings, recordings of past webinars, GitHub communities, and more. We love to hear your feedback on how we can improve these webinars. Please take a minute submitting your webinar feedback at aka.ms slash security webinar feedback. Thank you and see you next time. Goodbye.